Welcome back to the channel guys and welcome back to the mighty Suzuki GSX-R1000 K8. Now in this episode, I'm gonna finish off all of the jobs on this bike. If you remember back to last year, I think it was, I started like an upgrade series on this bike where we fitted the uh, new GSX-R calipers, the uh, RCS Brembo Master Cylinder, a few other little jobs. Well, in this episode, I'm gonna fit the link pipe to this machine. We're gonna take the ECU off and I'm gonna post it off to those wonderful people at P3 Tuning to be uh, flashed. Do a few of the maintenance related jobs that it has to be done at the start of the season because this bike has been parked up probably almost six months ago this was last started. So it's been full of fuel, left stood, we're going to start it, we're going to warm it, we're going to drain the oil, replace the oil, do the oil filters and all that sort of thing as well, and also fit the link pipe and get the bike ready for the season. So if that sounds of interest and you fancy watching a bit of garage tinkering, then this is the video for you. So go and get yourself a nice cup of milky tea and Chopsy, roll that intro. Ooh. First of all, I'm going to remove the belly pan, get it ready for the oil change first of all, and then we'll fire it up, see if it fires. Hopefully it will. I haven't even been charging the battery or trickle charging the battery, so the battery could be flat for all I know. So we'll try and fire it up, warm it up, drain the oil, and then uh, start stripping off that exhaust, I think, and get that link pipe fitted. I've been waiting for this. Trays for my bolts, magnetized, stick on the bottom. Store them underneath when I need them. Look at these, I'm still blown away by my tools. Absolutely amazing having these tools like this. I've never had a tool set up like this. I've got all my old tools in the bottom here. So this is all my old stuff in the bottom. And then these four here is, is the new stuff basically. But um, yeah, it's fantastic having really nice tools. Oh, that, that's all my old shit. But then I've also got these quite cool little uh, plastic things to house. They can't see it, idiots. www.toolporn.com. How do you even get the fairing off? How do you get these off? That was actually quite tricky to get off. So that's the bike ready for the oil change now. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to start it up. Hopefully it will start. Fingers crossed. It's not been started in uh, a few months. Hey, come back. Warm it up a little bit. Let's drain the oil out, put a new filter on, and then let the oil just soak out of it, I think, while we uh, fit the link pipe. So, the moment of truth. Mm, she's lighting up. Sounding promising. Of course it would start. So that's taken the water temperature up to about 80 degrees, but the oil temperature is still very, very cold. So I've let it run for a good six or seven minutes. As I say, water temperature to 80. The, feel the side of the engine, the sump here, is sort of warm to the touch, which means the oil behind it is quite warm. You don't want to take it too hot, of course, because you end up, could end up scolding yourself. You just want enough to warm it so it thins a little bit, is ready to run out of that engine. So let's crack the drain bolt, drain the oil out, and when the headers have cooled a little bit, take out the oil filter let's do it now this gives me a great excuse to use my new socket set uh what size do you think that is a 17. this is the halfords professional range little button to push to to put your socket on oh, lifetime guarantee i bought all these i'm not saying these you know i paid these or bought with my own money this is the first time i've used this socket this is this socket's a virgin Bloody hell, this is tight, isn't it? Christ, who did that up? Jesus Christ. Ah. Yes, Mavis, I've made a mess. We'll leave that draining, and now I'll try and get the oil filter off. Before we go any further, however, put my lovely new socket back. 
beautiful. Ooh. So lurking in between the headers, we have the filter. It's got a K&M filter on it. I quite like those K&M filters. They come with a, a socket attachment on the front of them. So you can just put a, a socket set onto them, put a socket on them. I bet it's a 17 mil again. No, I've just cleaned it. It is a 17, but I can't get it on there because of the headers. So I'm going to have to go into my spanner drawer, my virgin spanner drawer. Look at these. This is also a virgin. So be gentle with it, Chopsy. There we go. That's why the K&M ones are so good. Let's move that a little bit. We don't want any, any muck. That was nice and easy. I'm going to leave that now to drain and get on with the uh, back box now, the cat. Cat removal. So here is the link pipe. I bought this on eBay secondhand. Um, I'm hoping that fits this exhaust system. It should do. I think it should do. It said it was for a you know, K8 G6000 with the arrow system. So we'll remove the cat now, bolt this on. Um, that should save a bit of weight as well, actually. That is I think it's stainless steel, but it's not that heavy. So we've got a bolt here, remove this little cover piece. So let's put my little virgin back. She's been used. Another virgin for the chop chops treatment. Who would have thought I'd, I'd take so many virginities in one day? Uh, we've also got a bolt up in here as well. It's a captured nut on the other side, so we can just undo it from here. You don't want to go in with the virgin the wrong way. Did a bit of WD-40 on there. A bit of penetration spray for my virgin. <laughs> Why am I sexualizing my tools? Don't you get any ideas, maybe? Don't worry, I won't. It's tight all the way. Absolute filth. I've just noticed the Lambda sensor here plugs into this uh, loom here. I'm going to disconnect it. Get them to disable the Lambda as part of the flash. Hey, that's a Ducati special tool. So we are a little bit loose here now. I'm now going to remove the silencers from, from the uh, cat and then bang it all the way out. Hey, let's attempt now to remove the silencer. It's coming, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. Dear. Please. Absolute filth. I know, Mavis. I do apologise. Oh. So because I've loosened the front of the cat, this silencer won't come off. It's going to pull the whole lot off at once. So I'm just going to pull the whole thing out and then split this off of the cat afterwards. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah, that's coming easy. Oh, that's heavy. That's really heavy. One cat with silencer attached. Don't worry, I've got my safety sliders on. There's no chance of any injuries here. No socks. This would have been much easier on the bike, wouldn't it? Idiot, idiot. It's coming. Oh. And that great big hideous piece of metalwork. See you later. I'm out of breath now after that. So now the next job is, I think, offer up the link pipe onto the bike and then slot the, uh, slot the silencers back in. <sighs> or is it time for a coffee or a cuppa? Mavis, get the kettle on. It's the B-Moto beer fridge. Looking uh, decidedly empty, actually, after Christmas. We've got some brew dogs. Bruce will be happy. Get around here, Bruce. We've got a load of brew dogs to drink. I don't like it. I may just have to have a swig of the uh, Lidl special. What about Marks and Spencer? No one with Lidl, Mavis. There's nothing wrong with Lidl. Don't be a snob. A little smear. Copper slick grease. We're also going to need one of these. And slip that on. Line up that bolt hole. It's about there. I'm not going to tighten it up yet. We'll get the exhausts, you know, the, uh, the other bits on and then we'll see how it all fits together. Give it another rim job with a Absolute copper fill. And then ease it on. 
and we will uh, slip this on. So I've got my bracket here ready to tighten. We've got only a single bolt needed now to hold this link, link pipe on, which is that one. And then we've got the bolts, which obviously go around here to tighten down the link pipe onto these. What I'm gonna need now is a bolt to go onto one of these because these are on captive nuts on the, uh, on the stocker. So I need to find a bolt for one of these. If I go into my sliding cupboard of joy in here, oh, a bit of skating board, smoke machine, <laughs> as you do. Cough, cough, what's going on? I have my box of uh, bolts, hopefully this side. One of these will fit it. Yeah, that's the kitty. Highly recommended, get yourself a box of bolts. Where's my 12 mil virgin? Get started. Nice and tight. I do not want it blowing. I'm gonna try my best to avoid using that. I got these just from eBay. Go on eBay and search GSX R1000 or Suzuki bolts. And uh, you can buy like stainless steel bolts with the right pitch and thread type, etc., for your bike. This is all I do, and I stock up and have loads of them. So we do a job like this, you can remove horrible things like that, put in beautiful, shiny things like that. Oil, oil, oil. <laughs> My old favorite, the old Silkaline Pro 4 10W40. Thank Fook, it's Silkaline. <laughs> it's like a bag of blood. <laughs> and steady, I think, is the order of the day here. Oh, all over my sleeve. I feel like I'm making a cake here. Two hands, I need something to hold the funnel while I pour. I've got two hands, I need three hands. No baby wipes. To the rescue. In here. Yeah, okay. <laughs> this is really fiddly. That way a bit, that way. Go. Got there in the end. ECU removed. I'm now going to send that off to those lovely people at P3 Tuning and they're going to do a woolage flash on it based on the many, many bikes they've done in my spec. We're going to put the BMC air filter on it so they do a map which, with the BMC air filter included. Turn off the uh, torque restriction which is in the first three gears on the GSXR. Also remove the lambda obviously with the link pipe spec as well. So uh, let's get that in the post and by the power of YouTube this will be back before you even know it. Cut to it Mavis. Cut to it. It is now about three weeks after I recorded the first part of this video. I now have a flashed ECU. I have my BMC, sorry, DNA air filter. Um, I'm ready to put the bike back together. They were so quick, P3 tuning guys. They got this back to me within about three days. Flashed them back to me within about three days. I've just spent the other two and a half weeks guffing about traveling around Europe riding motorcycles. <laughs> but it's now time to finish this bike off. Whilst you was away, I thought I'd just check the coolant level. And uh, I popped the cap off the radiator and saw just like a plain white liquid in there, or clear liquid, should I say. And it turns out the bike just had plain water in the radiator. So I've had to top it up. I've drained it all. I've put in some putty line, pewter line. Uh, engine coolant, so it's now got coolant in it, not just water. I also fitted my rear Venhill braided lines. I just had the rubber lines at the back. I fitted the front braided lines when I worked on all the front brakes, but I never bothered fitting the rear braided line. Well, I've corrected that, and we now have all the black fittings and the rear bladed, braided line in place. I've also fitted a smaller front sprocket. So the standard is a 17, I fitted a, a 16. So I've reduced the gearing a bit up front, um, make it a little bit more lively on the throttle. So uh, we'll see how that works out. Here is the ECU. There's also some instructions come through from uh, P3 tuning. I've got to remove the exhaust valve or make sure it's at least set in the open position. So that's one of the things. Um, the O2 sensor can be removed from the exhaust. I've done that already. The pair valve or solenoid 
can be disconnected. I wasn't really planning on messing with the power valve, so I'm going to leave that for now. The air intake flap, so there's a flap on the inside of the intake into the air box, which obviously opens and closes. That's been set to open, so I need to remove that. And the purge valve and the EVAP canister can be removed. I didn't think my bike had that, um, but if I can find it, I'll take it away. The ECU is a real fiddly affair to get out, and I don't think it's going to be any easier to get back in, so uh, let's get the seat off, fit the ECU. Oh, Jesus. Ah, what a fiddly little bugger. Now it's time to fit the air filter. So we should be able to just lift the tanky, get into the air box. Hmm. Need something to wedge that with now. Is that an accident waiting to happen? Yes. Hmm. Possibly. This is a virgin screwdriver, by the way. Another virginity. Here we go. Ooh. Standard filter, high flow filter, it's not an original. There's a little bit of grit on the inside of the air box though. I think I'll just get my baby wipes and, and wipe that out a little bit. I'm sure when I bought this, I checked that the filter had been changed and there wasn't any grit inside it at that point. So it could be that that high flow is flowing more than the just air. Is there a flapper on this? Not sure there is a flapper on this model. Put the new air filter in. There we go. And let's pop the air box cover back on. That is the exhaust valve. If I'd have known when I had the link pipe off, I should have looked in and seen whether that was open or closed in there. I didn't. Now I'm assuming it's it's closed in that position. Because it's been disabled in the ECU, obviously it's not gonna move anymore. So I don't want it left in the shut position. I've done a little bit of YouTubing and it seems when it's in that spring position locked, that is actually open. So that's quite handy. That That is closed and where it's sprung, it's open. So I can just disconnect the wires and leave it set like that. There's no need to wedge anything. You know, it's, it's resting position, if you like, is open. So that's good news. Now I've started this, I might as well just take the whole servo motor out, wouldn't I? Save a couple of grams and there she blows. Unnecessary crap removed. That's the job's all done. Now I'm gonna fire it up, check my oil level, check my coolant level, providing that's all okay. I'm gonna chuck the fairings on and we're almost done. Fingers crossed that flash worked. And we just double check, I've got oil in it. I've got coolant in it. I think we're ready to try it. Neutral, pull the clutch. burning off the headers is what I hope that is. Hope so. So levels topped up, all ready to go. I'm just going to wait for it to cool down and then I'll just check the levels and the coolant. Obviously it's hot now, I'm going to have to wait for it to cool down just to top it up. Then I put the fairings back on. But that is basically it. It's actually, it sounds quite loud. It is louder without the cat, but because these bike, bikes got the twin silences, you've got like double the silencer anyway. So it'll still be fine for track days. Plus of course, I've got the baffles I can put in the silencers as well. But because there's two of them, even without the cat, you know, it still keeps the volume at a reasonable level. So I didn't want it too loud anyway, but that's, it's hard to tell inside an enclosed garage how loud it's gonna be. But I think that's gonna be all right. So um, what we do, I need to now get it MOT'd. So I'll probably bring you along for the ride along to the MOT and we can see how it feels with the map. And there's no errors on the dashboard. All seems to be absolutely fantastic. So uh, the proof in the pudding now is in the riding. So uh, that sounds of interest. Hit the subscribe button and come along and see how this is and what this is like to ride now it's been flashed. 
must say a massive thanks to P3 Tuning. Uh, I'll put contact details below. If you, they do a load of bikes on a postal tune, which is fantastic. You know, so um, check the links, check their website, and uh, I'll let you know what I think to it. But until next time, guys, bye bye. see you later.